Ever get the feeling like life's giving out participation trophies when what you really need deep down is a dose of, I don't know, pure undeserved grace? Mm -hmm. I know that feeling. Well, today we're diving right into that. God's grace, more than we deserve. Oh, interesting. This sermon transcript we're looking at today, it goes way beyond just like simple forgiveness, yeah. gets into some deep stuff. Yeah, the idea of grace, especially how this sermon lays it out, it's not just some like abstract religious thing. It really makes you think differently about fairness, reward, you know, what it means to deserve something good. Totally. And right away, the sermon jumps into defining grace. God's unmerited favor, not because we earned it, but because that's just how grace works, I guess. It's a radical concept when you really think about it. It almost feels radical, right? This idea that we don't always have to earn the good stuff. Absolutely. Like, imagine instead of a paycheck you worked for, it's more like you're out hiking on a scorching hot day and suddenly there's this hidden waterfall. Total refreshment. You didn't do anything to deserve it. It's just there. Okay, that's a beautiful image. But doesn't that kind of mess with our whole system of rewards and consequences? Yeah. Like if everyone gets the same grace, no matter what they've done, don't our choices matter less? I see what you're saying. It's like, where's the motivation to even try if it all comes out the same? That's the tension though, right? The sermon really pushes us to see grace not as this get out of jail free card. It's more like a leveler. It says, look, everyone, the saint and the sinner, we all start from the same place when it comes to need and grace. Huh. So how does the sermon illustrate that? It gives us powerful example. Picture a super devout religious leader, someone who seems to have it all together standing next to, say, someone who's made some big mistakes in their life. And the point is, they both need that boundless grace equally. That's a powerful image. But here's where I get tripped up. If grace isn't about reward or punishment, then how does that affect how we live? Do our choices even matter then? It's a question a lot of people struggle with, for sure. And the sermon, it tackles that head on. It's not saying that grace wipes away consequences or lets us off the hook for our actions. Instead, it's saying that true grace, it changes us from the inside out. So we actually want to live differently, not out of fear, but out of gratitude. So it's less about I better do this or else and more like I get to do this because... Exactly. You get it. It's a total shift in perspective. It's not about obligation anymore. It's about this inner transformation that happens when you really encounter grace. You start to see yourself and the world differently. Okay. So it's not just a free pass. It's more like this catalyst for change. Mm -hmm. But how does that actually work in our everyday lives? How do we go from this big abstract concept to like real world action? You know, it's like they say, we teach best what we most need to learn. And I think that applies here. Living out grace, it starts by looking inward, you know? Okay, so you're saying it's not necessarily about these big outward gestures. It's more about those subtle ways grace shows up in how we treat other people. Yeah. And how we treat ourselves. Yeah, exactly. And the sermon, it actually uses a story from the Bible to kind of drive this point home, the parable of the unforgiving servant. It's about this guy, right, who gets this massive debt completely forgiven. And then he turns around and refuses to forgive someone who owes him a way smaller amount. Can you believe that? Oh, wow. I yeah. felt that one. I can't tell you how many times I've been there holding on to grudges, even though I know I've been shown so much grace myself. It's almost embarrassing. Right. And that's what I find so interesting about this whole idea of grace. It kind of finds a light on those rough edges in our own lives, you know, the places where we haven't quite grasped the transformative power of it ourselves. So what do we do with that? How do we get unstuck? Well, instead of beating ourselves up about it, the sermon, hmm. it encourages us to see it as an opportunity. An opportunity to. OK, you got to tell me. Yeah. I need to know. To become, as the sermon puts it, living testimonies of the grace we've received. It doesn't really give a step-by-step -step guide, but it's more like, okay, you've heard the message, now go out and actually live it. Figure out what that looks like in your own life. It's like a personalized assignment rather than a one-size-fits-all kind of thing. Okay. Everyone's expression of grace is going to be unique. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it could be something as small as really listening to a friend who's having a tough time, you know, mm -hmm. or choosing to forgive someone even when it's really hard or just like choosing kindness over judgment when things get heated. Those everyday moments. Right. Those little interactions where we can either make things better or worse. You know, uh -huh. like we have all this power to either lift people up or tear them down. And that's where it gets really cool because those seemingly insignificant choices, those moments where we choose grace, they create a ripple effect. You know, I'm sensing a theme here, this idea that grace has this 
expansive quality. It's not just about our own personal experience. It actually impacts the world around us. Totally. It's like that image of the ocean again, right? Right. Boundless, always flowing outward, touching every shore. And what's amazing is that we get to be part of that flow. We can actually be conduits of that grace, letting it move through us and into the lives of other people. Man, that's beautiful. But mm -hmm. honestly, sometimes it feels impossible. Like when life throws those curveballs, you get hurt, you mess up, and the whole grace thing, it just goes out the window. Oh, tell me about it. I've been there so many times. The sermon acknowledges that it's not always easy. In fact, it actually names some of the biggest roadblocks we face when it comes to embracing and expressing grace. Oh, really? Well, don't leave me hanging. What what are some of those obstacles that keep tripping us up? You know, when we were talking about those everyday chances we get to choose grace, it really got me thinking. What about those situations where it just feels impossible? Like when someone's really hurt you, mm -hmm. betrayed your trust, that kind of thing. Yeah, those are tough ones, no doubt. Is it even realistic to like extend grace in those situations? It's definitely a whole other level of challenge when we're dealing with deep, hurt, broken trust. And the sermon, it gets that. Actually, it points to one of the biggest things that gets in our way when it comes to grace, our own ego. Ego, you mean that voice inside that's like, hey, I deserve better than this. Exactly. It's that sense of fairness, right, that can make us hold on to anger, resentment, even feeling like we're justified in our outrage. But the sermon, it challenges us to consider. Maybe grace isn't about what we deserve. Maybe it's about moving beyond those ego-driven reactions, tapping into something way deeper. Okay, I hear you. But when you're the one who's been hurt, that's a tough pill to swallow. How do we even begin to make that shift from I deserve justice to I choose grace? That's the million dollar question, right? Well, the sermon does offer some practical steps, even for those really tough situations. Mm. One thing that really stuck with me was this idea of shifting from judgment to curiosity. Curiosity, like trying to see things from the other person's perspective even when what they did seems totally inexcusable. It's not about condoning the behavior, but it's about creating space for understanding. Remember that image of the ocean, boundless and vast. What if we tried to see the other person, not just as the bad guy in our story, but as someone who's also navigating those same deep waters, just as flawed and messy as we are? Okay, yeah, I can see that. It's easy to get so caught up in our own hurt that we forget everyone's got their own story, their own struggles that might have led them to that moment. Exactly. And sometimes choosing grace can be as simple as really choosing to listen. I mean, really listen to the other person's story, not to excuse them, but to understand. And sometimes in that space of understanding, that's where healing can actually begin for both people involved. You know, it's interesting. We've been talking about grace mostly as this outward thing, right? Forgiving others, being compassionate. But what you just said about extending grace inward to ourselves that really hit home. Absolutely. Self-grace. That's where the real transformation starts when you say, if we can't show ourselves compassion and forgiveness, how can we authentically offer it to anyone else? It's like we're back to that image of the ocean, that vast, limitless grace. It's not just for other people, the ones who messed up. It's for us, too. Exactly. And I think really letting that sink in, that's where true freedom lies. The freedom to mess up, to fall short, to not have it all figured out and still be worthy of love and acceptance from ourselves, from whatever we believe in, whether it's a higher power or just the goodness within us. It's funny how we started this deep dive exploring the idea of God's grace, and now it feels like we've landed on this even bigger concept, this universal need for grace in every part of our lives, for ourselves and for everyone around us. That's the beauty of a deep dive, isn't it? Sometimes you start with a simple question and end up discovering a whole new way of seeing things. This has been an amazing conversation, I have to say. Thank you so much for guiding us through all of this. My pleasure, truly. Always love getting to explore these big questions with you. And to all our listeners, thanks for joining us on this deep dive into grace. We hope you'll keep searching, keep asking those big questions, and keep diving deep into the things that really matter.